Welcome back. Today we'll be searching for Nevada State Historical Markers numbers 261 through 265. Located on US 50 in Douglas County, at the entrance to the Spooner Summit Tahoe Rim Trailhead parking lot will be our first marker in this series. Let's go ahead and take a look at marker number 261, Spooner Summit. Spooner Summit, Toll Roads, Johnson's Cutoff, also called the Carson Ridge Immigrant Road, passed over Spooner Summit and down Clear Creek Road from 1852 through 1854, but was rugged and little used. With the discovery of the Comstock Lode in 1859, Spooner Summit became a focal point on the most heavily traveled branch of the Bonanza Road System linking Placerville, California and the new towns east of the Sierra Nevada. Territorial governments granted franchises to private individuals or companies, allowing them to build and maintain toll roads. The Rufus Walton Clear Creek Toll Road replaced Johnson's Cutoff in 1860, providing a better route around the southeast shore of Lake Tahoe via Glenbrook. This route was improved in 1863 with the completion of the Lake Tahoe Bigler Wagon Road, also called the Kings Canyon Road. About 5,000 Teamsters were moving goods along roads leading to the Comstock in 1863, but traffic began to decline in 1875. Stations were built at convenient intervals along the roads. Swift Station was about two miles east of Spooner Summit on Kings Canyon Road. In 1863, Spooner Station, located near the current junction of US 50 and State Route 28, a mile west of here, had a hotel, saloon, houses, blacksmith shop, and two barns. Lumber for the Comstock Massive amounts of wood were sent to the Comstock load from the Carson Range and the Tahoe Basin. Initially, wood was hauled by wagon, but soon the transport included trains, steamboats, and water flumes. Spooner Summit is in the midst of a former logging landscape. In 1873, logging in the area was consolidated by the formation of the Carson and Tahoe Lumber and Fluming Company. Workers were housed at a small settlement called Summit Camp, built along one side of the toll road. From 1875 to 1898, the company operated the Lake Tahoe Railroad along 8.75 miles of the line from Glenbrook to this spot. The difficult route included switchbacks and a 487-foot tunnel just west of the summit. The narrow-gauge railroad's sole purpose was to haul timber and lumber for building purposes and cordwood for fuel. This wood was transferred to an 11-mile-long V-flume that extended from Spooner Summit down Clear Creek to Carson Valley. There, the wood was loaded on the Virginia and Truckee Railroad for the rest of its trip to the Comstock. At its peak, the Comstock consumed about 80 million board feet of lumber and 2 million cords of firewood each year. About 300,000 board feet of wood passed over Spooner Summit each day. Early morning. The introduction of automobiles into the Tahoe Basin rapidly changed the character of the place, making it accessible for far more people as a growing tourist destination. Early in the 20th century, the decaying bonanza system of wagon roads had to serve the needs of the automobile travelers. In 1913, the Lincoln Highway Association designated the road up Kings Canyon over Spooner Summit and through Glenbrook as part of the Lincoln Highway. The highway was a private concept intended to enhance long-distance automobile travel by establishing the first transcontinental route. Actual work on this section began in 1914 when the Carson Good Roads Association placed redwood markers every mile. Each marker displayed the highway symbol and distance to Carson City, Glenbrook, and San Francisco. During this period, one motorist described part of the road as a narrow shelf along a barren, rocky mountainside. Little more than light maintenance was done on the road even after it was included in the Nevada State Highway System as part of Route 3. In 1923, the portion of Route 3 between Spooner Station and the state line was incorporated into the Forest Highway System, making funding available for major improvements. In 1927 and 1928, a graded two-lane automobile road was built along Clear Creek over Spooner Summit and onto Glenbrook. A combination of state and forest highway funds paid for the work. The new road became part of US 50. In the 1930s, the road was oiled and surfaced with asphalt. Snow removal allowed year-round access to the lake. Finally, in the late 1950s, this portion of US 50 was upgraded to the present four lanes. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 261. Let's go ahead and turn around now and head over to Dayton. Located at 135 Shady Lane is the Dayton Valley Historical Society and Museum. Situated next to the entrance to the museum is where we will discover our next marker. Marker number 262, Dayton Schoolhouse, 1865. Dayton Schoolhouse, 1865. In 1865, Lyon County built this imposing stone school building for the residents of Dayton, then the county seat. It is the second oldest schoolhouse in Nevada and is the oldest such structure to remain in its original location. 
The building served the community as a school until 1959 when it was closed. It later housed the Dayton Senior Citizen Center and became the home of the Dayton Historical Society Museum in 1991. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 262. Next, let's drive east to Fallon. Located at 151 East Park Street is the Oates Park Art Center. When you walk up the steps to the entrance, you will find our next marker on your left before going into the Art Center. So let's take a look at marker number 263, Oates Park School. Oates Park School. The Oates Park School was designed in 1914 by Frederick J. Longchamps, Nevada's preeminent architect of the period. He is also responsible for the 1921 North and South Wing additions. This building is one of his earliest and perhaps his first public school designs. The structure was placed on the state and national registers of historic places in 1990 because of its importance in the history of local education and its architectural significance, including the use of contrasting brick colors and attention to interior detail. In 1995, the Churchill Arts Council began construction and renovation on the facility for its use as a multidiscipline cultural center. Drawing on the building's legacy of serving the community, the Churchill Arts Council reopened the building as the Oates Park Art Center in February 2003. Nevada State Historical Marker number 263. Turning around again, let's travel west to Silver City. Located at 385 High Street is the Silver City Community Center. Affixed to the base of the flagpole is where we will find our next marker. Marker number 264, Silver City Schoolhouse. Silver City Schoolhouse. The growing town of Silver City built a schoolhouse at this site in 1867-1868. Enrollment was as high as 166 students during the 1880s. Children were educated here for nearly a century until the school closed in 1958. The building then began its career as the Silver City Community Center and Volunteer Fire Department. The fire department parked trucks inside the South Classroom. Community events took place in the North Classroom. Fire destroyed the schoolhouse in 2004. The community center was rebuilt in 2007 on the same place. The new building closely resembles the old schoolhouse in size and architectural style. Materials from the original building are incorporated into the new structure. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 264. Our next marker is going to be in Reno. Sandwiched between eastbound Interstate 80 and West 4th Street is Mountain View Cemetery. Located in the cemetery on the corner of Juniper and Sequoia Street is a fairly good-sized granite boulder resting in the grass. Attached to this boulder is marker number 265, Governor Emmett Derby Boyle. Governor Emmett Derby Boyle. Eight grave sites to the north rest Emmett Derby Boyle, 1879-1926, the first native-born governor of Nevada, serving from 1915 to 1923. Born in Gold Hill, Boyle was also the first graduate of the University of Nevada to become governor. At 35, he was the youngest person to hold the state's highest office. Governor Emmett Boyle worked on Nevada's water laws and introduced the state's first executive budget. A strong supporter of women's rights, Boyle called the Nevada legislature into special session in 1920 to ratify the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution, granting women the right to vote. Emmett Boyle died in Reno on January 3, 1926, and is buried next to his wife, Vida McClure Boyle, whom he married in 1903. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 265.